Hello everyone. This is David down in the basement where the fish are. I'm going to be setting up some, some barbs, probably cherry barbs, and maybe some tetras for breeding in a few days. And that means when they spawn and the, I get the eggs, these are like microscopic little fishies. So I'm going to be needing some really small infusoria to start off feeding them. I don't want to try and feed them brine shrimp. The shrimp are liable to eat them. So what I do is I start this stuff and I try and use a couple of different water sources. This water here is out of the tub outside. There's no fish but there's probably some algae. I know there's a big bullfrog that's why there's no fish. Um, so there's got to be some nutrients from the frog. And the other one here is water straight out of my uh, rain barrel tub and since it hasn't rained in a week, week and a half, that water's just been sitting there so it's probably getting a little juicy too. Now, I'm in Georgia and all the water in Georgia falls in Georgia. So we have clay soil and other than that there's not much in the way of nutrients. So I have to add something to the water to make it like worthwhile for things to live in. Something I found that I use in the garden is this azomite. Uh, it has 70 different minerals and trace elements in it. So I'll add some of that to the water. It's a powder, but it'll stir up and dissolve. And what that will do is put some of these trace elements in so the water will support life. Uh, if you're up in Michigan, you know you, you have like no selenium in your water. And there's a lot of other minerals you're short of. So I just put a pinch of this stuff in the water. It'll stir up. It's got a little calcium in it, so it'll help the pH a little bit. But mostly I'm chasing all the bazillion different little minerals and trace elements. So we'll add that in there. Now the water comes a lot closer to being ready to support life. Now, I picked these beans this morning, uh, and of course these are like way too way too far. They are not going to cook up very good for people. Uh, the ones that are like this, I normally will blanch and freeze, and they are fabulous food for your ancestors. Uh, the platies pick at it, the guppies pick at it, but any of your guys that like vegetarian stuff will go nuts for freshly blanched and then thawed out. These can't hardly even get into them, they're so busy. So I'm going to take, there's like five seeds into that one. And we'll open up, get some more seeds for that one. This is the second bean because I'm not really getting enough seeds out of here. I need this to get going pretty quickly because I expect to need a, a usable culture within seven to ten days. So that gets that going. Now I'll put a coffee filter or a um, see, I have a coffee, coffee filter here handy or a paper towel rubber banded over the top to keep bugs and flies and stuff from coming in and I'll run a little bit of an airline I won't use a stone, just a little bit of an airline so the water moves and give it a little diffused light. So I got a gallon of, of water with no bleach in it. This one's out of the pond with a bullfrog. This one is uh, out of the rain barrel, been sitting for a week and a half. Uh, I've added some azomite so I get the trace elements and trace minerals because the water here in Georgia doesn't have any. For the natural food supply for these guys, I've added fresh picked organic beans. Go ahead and drop one of the, split one of them and toss it in. I'm going to add a bit of an airline. It's going to be at room temperature, which means it's going to be, I'm in the basement, so it'll be 74 to 78. And a little bit of an airline, just enough to keep the water moving around a little bit. Uh, so we'll see how this does. This is David down in the basement fish room showing you how I get started to get infusoria.
for I'm hoping some good barb and tetra babies in about 10 days. Here's one of the containers that I started about a month ago, I guess, and I've been keeping it going by adding in some, these were uh, pole beans that I grew and I let them finish off so I could harvest the beans, and then I threw a couple of the shells in here, figured that would provide some great food for all of the little critters in here. So now we're going to go over and I'll show you what all this looks like. I siphoned out of uh, right up in right up against that little piece of bean to see what I could get and now I'll show you what all got got captured. <laughs> 